This channel has delved into numerous recent papers examining the rate of the universe's expansion and the factors contributing to its acceleration. These are some of the most fundamental topics in cosmology, the study of the origin and evolution of the universe. And as mentioned previously, there is a problem. Different methods of measuring the expansion rate give different results. This is called the Hubble tension, and it is one of the biggest mysteries in modern physics. Yet, a recent publication in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society proposes an unexpected and fascinating notion. Perhaps our existence resides within a colossal void, an area of space less densely populated than average. In this video, we'll delve into this study, examining its potential to elucidate the Hubble tension and the observable movements of galaxies in our vicinity. Additionally, we'll address the hurdles and ramifications of this hypothesis and its profound implications for our comprehension of the cosmos. The expansion rate of the universe, also known as the Hubble constant, derives its name from astronomer Edwin Hubble, who first observed the universe's expansion in 1929. This constant denotes the rate at which the space between galaxies is stretching, contingent upon their distance and velocity. As galaxies recede further from us, they accelerate away due to the expansive nature of space. Various methods exist for gauging the distance and velocity of galaxies, but the most prevalent ones rely on observations of the Cosmic Microwave Background CMB, and Type 1 A Supernovae. The CMB, the universe's oldest radiation, emerged approximately 380,000 years following the Big Bang, marking the moment when the universe became transparent to light. This radiation serves as a snapshot of the early universe, exhibiting minuscule temperature and density fluctuations that unveil its characteristics. Analyzing data from the Planck satellite, which meticulously mapped the cosmic microwave background, CMB, provides crucial insights into the Hubble constant and other cosmological parameters, including the universe's density and composition. Type 1, a supernovae, characterized by their remarkably consistent brightness, offer an effective means of gauging cosmic distances. By juxtaposing a supernova's apparent brightness with its intrinsic luminosity and gauging the redshift of its light, we can deduce both its distance and velocity relative to us. By amalgamating the distances and velocities of numerous supernovae, we can determine the Hubble constant. The Pantheon sample stands out as the most extensive and contemporary compilation of Type 1, a supernova data, comprising over 1,000 supernovae sourced from various surveys. Although both the CMB and supernova methods are highly dependable and precise, they yield disparate values for the Hubble constant. The CMB approach approximates a value of around 67 kilometers per s per megaparsec, whereas the supernova method estimates it to be approximately 74. This difference is not due to random errors or systematic uncertainties, but it is statistically significant and persistent. This is the Hubble tension and it implies that there is something wrong with our standard model of cosmology or that there is some new physics that we are missing. But there is another piece of the puzzle that we need to consider. The motion of galaxies. Galaxies not only undergo motion from the expansion of space, but also possess individual peculiar velocities induced by the gravitational pull of nearby matter. These peculiar velocities can significantly influence the determination of the Hubble constant, particularly for the supernova method, which assumes galaxies move solely due to spatial expansion. Failure to account for peculiar velocities could lead to either overestimation or underestimation of the Hubble constant, contingent upon the direction and magnitude of motion. How do we measure these peculiar velocities? 
One approach involves leveraging the Cosmic Flow's three catalog, renowned as the largest and most exhaustive compilation of galaxy distances and velocities. It encompasses over 177,000 galaxies located within 300 megaparsecs from our vantage point. By juxtaposing the observed velocities of galaxies with the anticipated velocities resulting from spatial expansion, we can approximate the peculiar velocities of galaxies and rectify them in the supernova data. However, upon conducting this analysis, the authors of the paper stumbled upon something striking and captivating, a substantial and coherent movement of galaxies within 250H megaparsecs from our location, constituting the largest coherent motion ever discerned in the local universe. Termed the bulk flow, this phenomenon indicates that galaxies within this region are moving uniformly in a specific direction and at a consistent speed relative to the average motion of the universe. Remarkably, the bulk flow isn't haphazard or isotropic. Rather, it aligns with a distinct direction in the sky, pointing towards the constellation of Centaurus. Employing a Bayesian model to accommodate the bulk flow in the supernova data, the authors observed a significant reduction in the Hubble tension. This suggests that the bulk flow constitutes a primary contributor to the Hubble tension, and by factoring it in, we can reconcile the divergent methods of gauging the universe's expansion rate. What prompts the bulk flow? Why galaxies in the nearby universe exhibit do synchronized motion in a singular direction and at a uniform pace? The authors posited a straightforward yet elegant explanation. Perhaps our existence resides within a colossal void, a region of space less dense than average. This void is called the local void, and it is one of the largest structures in the nearby universe, spanning about 150 megaparsecs in diameter. It is located in the opposite direction of the bulk flow, which means that the galaxies in the bulk flow are moving away from the local void due to the gravitational pull of the surrounding denser regions. However, the paper clarifies that the local void isn't a complete void. Rather, it's a region where the density of matter is approximately 20% lower than the average density of the universe. While this discrepancy might not appear significant at first glance, it exerts a considerable influence on both the expansion rate and the gravitational potential within the local universe. Inside the void, the expansion rate accelerates due to the reduced gravitational influence of matter. Additionally, the gravitational potential diminishes within the void because of the decreased mass, resulting in less bending of space-time. These effects offer plausible explanations for both the observed bulk flow and the Hubble tension. Employing a straightforward model, the authors of the paper estimated the characteristics and position of the local void and its impact on the Hubble constant and bulk flow. Remarkably, their analysis revealed that the local void is situated approximately 70 megaparsecs away from us, with a density contrast of around 0.2, signifying a 20% reduction in density compared to the universal average. They also found that the local void can explain the observed magnitude and direction of the bulk flow, and that it can reduce the Hubble tension by about 70%. This means that the local void is a plausible and consistent solution to the Hubble tension, and that it reveals the existence and influence of a large-scale structure in the nearby universe. Thank you for tuning in to this video, and I trust you found it both enjoyable and informative. Until next time, take care and keep exploring the wonders of the universe.